So as for the short-term growth outlook for South Africa, we forecast that growth will weaken from an estimated 2.1% in 2022 to 1.6% in 2023, as you can see from the chart on the left here. Uh, growth averaged a strong 2.5% year on year in the first three quarters of 2022, but we think that it peaked in Q3. So as for investment, uh, despite rising investments in the country's power sector as government seeks to procure more energy from private firms uh, to end uh, the current power crisis, this will take time to translate into uh, improved electricity supply. Uh, power outages have been worsened over recent years due to uh, state utility escoms, uh, lack of financial resources to carry out proper maintenance on its aging power plants. Uh, and our power team expects outages to persist uh, this year as generation remains muted. So this is already affecting many industries and we think it will continue uh, weighing on overall business sentiments uh, in the near term. And this is already reflected in weakening uh, business confidence indicators and industry turnover uh, in real terms, as you can see from the chart on the right. We think the impact of higher prices and interest rate hikes by the South African Reserve Bank into early 2023 will be felt more this year than in 2022. So inflation only recently peaked in, and we don't uh, we don't really expect the central bank to unwind uh, monetary tightening until 2024. This, so this will leave households and businesses uh, facing higher borrowing costs this year. Now shifting to the political and fiscal outlooks. Uh, so in recent quarters, we've seen an increase in political instability and uncertainty about policy continuity as reflected in uh, the falling score and the policy continuity components of our SDPRI, as you can see here on the left. Uh, President Ramaphosa came very close to resigning in November over uh, unproven allegations that emerged in June last year and that centre on the possibility that he uh, failed to properly handle his theft of one of his farms uh, back in 2020. So given the lack of a politically viable alternative within the ruling party, he was re-elected party leader at the ANC's elective uh, conference in December, showing that many within the party still rally behind him. Uh, this was welcomed by investors, uh, as he kind of remains the most uh, pro-reform figure within the ruling ANC. But the problem is that risks uh, to his position will persist until it's cleared by ongoing police investigations into the so-called uh, Farmgate affair. Uh, and if he is charged, he will be ex expected to step down as per the party's uh, step aside rule. So that possibility uh, poses risks to government continuity and reforms. Even if it stays, uh, farm gates and the resulting increase in divisions within the ANC will further weaken its electoral appeal ahead of the May 2024 general election, where we expect the ANC to really struggle to obtain a majority after years of declining popularity. So we believe that the government will remain committed to the reform agenda in the coming quarters, including uh, reforming the, the, the alien power sector. But we think the need to boost uh, electoral support, particularly at a time when there's a lot of unrest and strike action of the pay disputes, uh, it will make fiscal consolidation more challenging ahead of the polls. And this leads us to the short term uh, fiscal outlook. So the country's fiscal position has actually improved a lot in the last couple of years, uh, with the budget deficit narrowing sharply from almost 10% of GDP in the 2020-21 uh, fiscal year uh, to a forecast 5% in the current fiscal year ended in March 2023, as you can see from the columns uh, on the right. And this was thanks to efforts to cap uh, spending growth and above all, a big increase in revenues as the economy recovered uh, from COVID and commodity prices rose between the second half of uh, 2020 and the first half of uh, 2022. Now, against government projections, we think the deficit will widen in fiscal year 23-24. And one of the reasons is there is likely to be some slippage on the wage bill. So the government uh, unilaterally implemented a 3% nominal hike in public wages in the current fiscal year when unions were demanding a 10% rise. And we think that uh, further strike action and the political need to appease the electorate will probably push the ANC-led government to increase wages by something closer to inflation, which we see averaging 5.5% uh, in 2023. And as for debt, we expect it will rise further this year and peak in 2023 at almost 76% uh, of GDP, as shown by this uh, red line. Although our forecasts currently assume that most of the planned uh, partial takeover of Eskom's debt by the government will happen in the coming fiscal year, for pushing up the debt to GDP ratio in 2023. Should the new budget coming up next month 
indicate that this will instead be a phased uh, process, we would revise our forecasts to show a much smaller increase in public debt in the coming quarters. The peak will probably be, will probably happen a couple of years uh, later.